So let's talk about revenue. Now, when you first bring your historical revenue information into your financial model via your accounting package, it's brought into the historical income statement. Now, as you can see, we're bringing in three categories of revenue, those categories being Coco Bix, Just Wrong, and Nutribubble Sales, and we have their historical information on the right-hand side of the sheet here. Now, heading back to our table of contents, when we forecast revenue, the forecasts are handled on the revenues and expenses sheet. As you can see, our three categories of revenue are being brought through, and they all have their own unique drivers, those drivers being amounts, unit prices and volumes, and year-in-year -year growth rates. Year and year growth rates will be the default driver if you've opened a variable drivers model, and if you've opened a non-variable drivers model, then your default driver will be amounts. Now I can enter my forecast assumptions on the right hand side of the sheet here into the coloured assumption cells. Looking at the example of Cocobix sales in December 22, you can see that the assumption of 907.3 has been entered, and that matches my output down below here. If I wanted to update my forecast assumption, I can simply type in 1000 over the top, hit enter, and then you'll see that that has updated our assumption and our output down below. Now when we look at revenue in a three-way financial model, it's all about the three statement impacts. Using $100 of revenue as an example, we would expect to see that revenue hitting the income statement and the cash flow statement. Revenue flows down the income statement, increasing net profit after tax, which in turn increases the equity on the balance sheet. Revenue also affects the cash receipts within the operating section of the cash flow statement, which in turn increases the change in cash held. The change in cash held then increases cash at bank, increasing the total assets and therefore balancing the balance sheet. Hopping back into our model, if we want to see our $1,000 of Cocobix sales revenue for December 22 hitting the financial statements, we can head back to our table of contents and activate the financial statements. Firstly, looking at the income statement, I can expand our total revenue rows here, looking at my three revenue categories being brought through, and if I scroll across the time series on the bottom right until I get to December 22, we can see my $1,000 of revenue hitting the income statement. Then looking at the cash flow statement, I can scroll to the bottom of this sheet, when we get to the cash flow statement, expanding the cash receipts rows, seeing our three revenue categories again, and there we have our $1,000 of Cocobix revenue as well. Now there's a bit more going on within a full three-way financial model as revenue affects other areas of analysis. For example, if you have GST within your model, then there may be GST added on top of that revenue, which it must be accounted for. If not all revenue is received in cash within the first period, we then need to adjust for that within our debtors analysis in the working capital section of your model to reflect the payment timing differences. And revenue has an implication on the tax of the business and what corporate taxation may be owed. Now these considerations will all be handled within their own unique areas of analysis within the model and their own individual videos. However, for the purposes of this video, when we're looking at just the impacts of revenue within a three-way financial model, revenue hits the income statement and the cash flow statement, and that is how we balance the three statement impacts and make sure that our balance sheet is always balanced.